Yes, sir. Please start. Hello. सर आवाज नहीं आ रहा है वॉइस ब्रेक हो रहा है सर आपका हेलो मैम हाँ हाँ आता क्लियर है ओके ओके रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर नितिन डोंगरवाल सर डॉक्टर प्रीति धर्मा डियर फेलो कलीग्स ऑफ दिस रिफ्रेशन कोर्स मैम हेलो हेलो मैम आई एम आई ऑडिबल मैम यस यस नाउ नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल नाउ इट इज क्लियर मैडम यस यस रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर नितिन डोंगर डॉक्टर प्रीति धार्मिक मैडम and my dear fellow colleagues of this uh, refresher course i am going to my name is uh, dr utpal jagdish dongre head and assistant professor department of biochemistry dr ambedkar college dikshabhumi nagpur and today i am going to present my seminar on biological applications of green method synthesized silver nanoparticles so starting from the introduction uh, in modern medical sciences uh, dr synthetic drugs are more common as there is no efficient substitute for these drugs however in deadly diseases like cancer use of synthetic uh, synthetic drugs and chemotherapy causes paranoia extreme anxiety hallucinations seizures segregation suicidal or homicidal behavior extreme hair loss chest pain or heart attack liver diseases and many more therefore alternatives for such drugs and treatments are the need of time in recent years nanomaterials have emerged as a important player in modern medicine with clinical applications ranging from con contrast agents in imaging to carriers for drug and gene delivery into tumors nanoparticles are materials with overall dimensions in the nanoscale that is under 100 nanometer so what is green method to synthesize uh, nanoparticles so use of any biological material to uh, reduce the metal ions is called as the green method to syn uh, synthesize the nanoparticles for example we can use the plant extract and uh, if we use uh, silver or gold salt in a solution in a solution form and if we add the solution of the silver or the gold uh, salt in plant extract so what will happen the phytochemicals which are present in the plant reduces the uh, metal ion into its neutral ion meaning what silver here in this case silver or gold is having a valency of 1 so that is reduced by this phytochemicals into its neutral form of either silver or either gold so different phytochemicals are present in the plant and other chemicals are also present for example here it is mentioned that uh, alkaloids anthroquinones coenzymes phenolics vitamins naphthoquinone sugars proteins terpenoids nitrate reductase like enzyme so different vitamins proteins enzymes and phytochemicals are responsible to reduce the metal ions uh, which is having a plus 1 charge into its neutral charge meaning neutral atom and those atom then aggregate to give rise a nanoparticle of different size and shapes applications of nanoparticles due to nanoscale effects and increased surface area nanomaterials have been investigated as promising tools for the advancement of diagnostic biosensors targeted drug delivery targeted gene delivery biomedical imaging genetic engineering so in our laboratory we have prepared uh, actually we had prepared certain nanoparticles using the plant samples and then we checked the efficacy of those nanoparticles against the cancer cell lines and anti obesity potential so uh, for this we used two cell line one is the human lung cell line and second one is the 3t 3l1 cell line for uh, anti obesity potential so in material and method uh, silver nanoparticles were synthesized using 1 millimolar solution of silver nitrate and andrographis paniculate leaves extract as per the uh, method given by odd m et al in 2012 so these are the two cell lines that we maintained in our laboratory the first one is the human lung adenocarcinoma which is also called as the a549 cells the media that we used to grow the uh, to grow the cells uh, was uh, dmem uh dalbeck was modified eagles medium and its modification uh, modified media is called as nutrient mixture f12 ham so this was the media uh, media that we we used to grow uh, to grow this a549 cells uh, in our laboratory the second cell line that we used was mouse embryonic recombinant pre adipocyte which is also called as the 3t3 l1 cell and the media for this cell line was uh, dmem 
what is this 3T3L1 cell is that when we purchase this cells from the NCCS Pune, they provide us it in the pre-adipocyte form. And in our laboratory, we have to convert these pre-adipocyte uh, uh, cell lines into the mature adipocytic form. So what is this? How the pre-adipocyte and mature adipocytes can be differentiated? So pre-adipocyte doesn't contain lipid droplet uh, and mature adipocyte uh, cell line contain lipid droplets. So this is the main difference between the pre-adipocyte and mature adipocyte. So when we purchase 3T3L1 from the NCCS Pune, we have to convert this pre-adipocyte into mature adipocytic cell line using an induction cocktail of IBMX, dexamethasone and insulin. So if we give these three chemicals to this pre-adipocytic 3T3L1 cells, so they will convert into the mature adipocyte after 10 days. So culture conditions were, cells were purchased from National Center of Cell Science Pune and maintained in HAMS F12 nutrient mixture, uh, that is for FI49 cells and uh, DMEM containing 4 gram per deciliter of glucose and 1 millimolar sodium pyruvate. This is the media for 3T3L1 cell lines. But for both the uh, cell lines, uh, we uh, used 10% fetal bovine serum to provide nutrition. And to avoid contamination, we used 1% streptomycin and penicillin antibiotic. And cells were grew, uh, cells, uh, cells were grew at 37 degrees Celsius at 5% carbon dioxide in carbon dioxide incubators. Later on, we performed uh, the, if, uh, we checked the efficacy of these nanoparticles on fourth passaged cells. So when cells uh, uh, were uh, grow in our laboratory in the flask, the cells were treated without and different concentrations of nanoparticles. Without meaning this was the control where we had not added the nanoparticles and with uh, nanoparticles mean this was our experimental flask where we added nanoparticles in different concentrations. So this was the material and method. And this is, uh, these are the results. The characterization of silver nanoparticles synthesized by andrographis paniculate use extract the, it is showing, the first one is showing the same analysis that is scanning electron microscopic analysis result. So when we had prepared our nanoparticles, we send it for this type of analysis and it is showing overall general morphology. It is not showing that whether nanoparticles are synthesized or not. So whether nanoparticles are synthesized or not have been confirmed by this kind of test, which is called as the transmission electron microscopy analysis. So here we can find that this is the circular shape of the nanoparticles and the size were ranging from 18 nanometer. It has been shown over here that 18 nanometer to 52 nanometer sized nanoparticles were formed uh, by using uh, the plant and the silver nitrate solution. Later on, we performed Fourier transmission uh, infrared uh, uh, micro spectroscopy. And uh, uh, by this FTR analysis, we came to know that the nanoparticles are capped or having this kind of functional groups that is carbon dioxide, CH alkane and uh, OH alcoholic groups were present in those nanoparticles for which we got different kind of results. So in our laboratory, when we uh, grow, uh, when we grew this uh, FI49 cells in control and experimental flask. So in control, we didn't add uh, nanoparticles. However, however, in experimental, we add nanoparticles in different concentrations ranging from 5 microgram per ml to 50 microgram per ml and performed cell viability assay. It is also called as the MTT assay. So it is thought, uh, it has been thought that oxidative stress induced via the AG nanoparticles and the plant uh, extract uh, may be responsible for the killing of the cancer cell. And here also the cell viability percentage ha has been decreased in significant order, uh, concluding that the nanoparticles may have anti-cancer properties. This is the microscopic uh, figures. The figure three is showing the A549 cells without plant derived silver nanoparticles, meaning this one is our control. And figure four is showing the A549 cells treated with plant derived silver nanoparticles. So in experimental tube, in, in experimental flask, meaning in figure four, you can find that there is decreased in cell population, cell growth in figure number four, suggesting the killing of cancer cells in presence of the given nanoparticle. The next 
experiment we performed with respect to the synthesized nanoparticles on uh, 3T3 L1 obesity cells. So again, we grew cells into different flasks. There were uh, many number uh, replicates we had performed, but here I'm presenting only these two. So the control and the experimental flask. In control flask and the experimental flask, we grew the cells. And uh, later on, we didn't add uh, nanoparticles in control. However, we added nanoparticles in the tube of experimental along with the induction cocktail of IBMX, dexamethasone, and insulin in both the tubes, in both the flasks. And we kept them in media for 10 days. And after 10 days, the pre-adipocytes were converted into mature adipocyte in both the flasks. But how we came to know that the mature adipocytes have been generated or not? So for that, we performed an oil red staining experiment. So uh, this is the stain which particularly, particularly stains the lipids only. So in the control tube, there were no nanoparticles. So more amount of lipids have been generated. And uh, in experimental, the lipid generation was very uh, low. So it, it, is it is shown by this staining uh, uh, by the oil red stain. This is further validated by this figure number six. This is the uh, microscopic uh, picture of control flask. Here you can find uh, this red uh, circular dots. These are the 3T3 L1 cells. So more amount of lipids uh, had been generated when we had performed this experiment and stained it with the uh, oil red O stain. So you can find here more amount of reddish cells. However, as compared to this control in figure number seven, meaning in experimental flask, these lines, uh, if you are able to see these lines, these are the normal 3T3 L1 cells. However, very few 3T3 L1 cells had been converted into the mature adipocyte. So very less amount of red stain you will find over here, indicating that the pre-adipocyte uh, was not converted into the mature adipocyte in presence of nanoparticles when we had uh, uh, performed this experiment in experimental flask. So this also concluded that this nanoparticle may have potential for uh, anti-obesity property. Conclusion, silver nanoparticles are synthesized using andrographis paniculate of size ranging from 18 to 52 nanometer. FTR analysis showed presence of carbon dioxide, alkane and alcoholic group. The plant-derived silver nanoparticles may have anti-cancer potential for human lung cancer cells. The plant-derived AG nano silver nanoparticles may have anti-obesity potential. These are the few references uh, related to this work. And thank you. I hope I was uh, audible. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, is it your PhD work? No, ma'am. Uh, okay. This is our MSc uh, dissertation uh, oh. work. MSc students have done oh. this. Very nice, sir. So, Utpal, sir? Yes, sir. So, you have electron microscopy over uh, Sir, Cochin uh, University. Acha. So, you have any yes. facilities? No, sir. You have any facilities. Cochin University is a key, sir. Okay. And, sir, uh, from where you have procured those cell lines? Uh, Ma'am, from NCCS Pune, National Center for Cell Science, Pune, uh, okay. Pune University campus. Okay. In India, yes, uh, NCCS provide uh, this kind of cell lines, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev, sir. Dr. Sanjeev, do you see? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm coming, ma'am. Yes, sir, I'm coming. आप जब भी ज्वाइन करने के थे इसलिए हमने आगे के पार्टिसिपेंट्स का स्टार्ट कर दिया था सेमिनार जी 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 यस हाँ सर आपको स्लाइड्स दिख रहे हैं जी 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 यस yes, शुरू करिए जी जी गुड आफ्टरनून डोंगरवार सर पीपीटी मैम एंड ऑल माय फ्रेंड पार्टिसिपेंट माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर संजीव कुमार लोसिया असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोलॉजी एएससीए गवर्नमेंट पीजी कॉलेज निवाड़ी मध्य प्रदेश 
आज का मेरा टॉपिक है फ्रेश वाटर फ्रेशस इन बरुआ सागर झील ऑफ झांसी डिस्ट्रिक्ट उत्तर प्रदेश नेक्स्ट स्लाइड मैम इंट्रोडक्शन द बरुआ सागर झील इन कॉम फ्रेशस द सेवरल वेराइटीज ऑफ फ्रेशस विच आर बीइंग यूज बाय द नेटिव ऑफ बरुआ सागर टाउन दिस लेक इज सिचुएटेड 25 किलोमीटर फ्रॉम झांसी On the road Jhansi to Khajuraho, Barua Sagar Jhil is about 25 kilometer from Jhansi in Uttar Pradesh and 8 kilometer from headquarter of Niwali district of Madhya Pradesh. Geographically, it is situated between 25 degree 22 minute 25 second north latitude and 78 degree 43 minute 52 second. East lo longitude. It is one of the significantly potential water body in the Jhansi district of Uttar Pradesh. Next slide, ma'am. <coughs> Material and method. The fish and samples were collected from different station of Jhil with the help of local fishermen. For this, various size of masses were used to catch the fish. All collected fish samples were identified. Next slide, ma'am. Result and discussion. During present study, 16 fish species were collected from Barua Sagar Jhil, which are belonging to five quarter. Cypriniformis order included Cyprinidae family with seven species. Order Clupeformis was presented by one family Notopteridae with one species Notopterus Notopterus. Next slide, ma'am. Order Siluriformis comprised four family. Each family clarity with one species, Clarius vertricus family, Siluridae with one species, Valagoa two family, Bagridae with two species, Miss Mitus or and Mister Singhala and family Hetero Neustidae with one species, Hetero Neus Neustus fossils. Order Mesto order Mesta Simbeli forms each presented by single family Mesta Simbeli D with one species and order Chani forms with one family Chani D with two species Channa punctatus and Channa striatus. Next. Conclusion. Thus, with the foregoing discussion, the other's opinions are that the physiochemical, ge geological, and biotic factors of Barua Sagar Jhil are quite convincing and favorable for fish population, but due to the presence of predatory Next slide. Key point: the present study gives the information regarding the fish fauna of Barua Sagar Jhil of Jhansi District of Uttar Pradesh. In present study, 16 fish species were observed, which belong to five order, eight family, and 11 genera. All fish species listed. Edge follow Labio Rohita, Labio Calvasu, Labio Vata, Labio Bonius, Katla Katla, Serenus Mregula, Chacunis, Chagunio, Not of Terrace, Not of Terrace, Clarius Vatrakus, Dialogo Vatu, 
हेट्रोन्यूस्टस फॉसिल मिस्टस एर मिस्टस सिंघाला एक ओके थैंक यू नेक्स्ट स्लाइड में थैंक्स थैंक यू संजीव सर थैंक यू सो मच जी थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू मिस अर्पणा दुर्गा दुर्गी यस मैम आम ही मैम प्लीज प्ले दी रिसेंट यस यस क्या आप देख रहे हैं पिक्चर मॉन मैम फिफ्टीन है बट उसमें से थ्री तो ऐसी है मैं कर लूँगी फटाफट जी यस मैम इज माय वॉइस क्लियर यस यस प्लीज कंटिन्यू ओके मैम गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर डोंगरवार सर डॉक्टर प्रीति धार्मिक मैम एंड ऑल माय कलीग्स आई एम इस अर्पणा दुर्गे असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन बायोकेम and uh, it is not my research work uh, it's just a review based presentation on the topic that is plant extracts derived metal nanoparticles and their antimicrobial potential so many metal particles are known but uh, here uh, is the review where we can utilize plant extracts for the making of nanoparticles so that its uh, toxicity can be reduced so in next slide something about nanoparticles uh, now metal nanoparticles are nothing but the uh, nano sized particles ranging in the sizes from 1 to 100 nanometers then these nanoparticles can be utilized for the specific targeting as a specific targeting systems and also as the better drug delivery systems now many metal nanoparticles have been already synthesized by utilizing certain metals like uh, gold silver zinc platinum palladium selenium titanium and copper etc but here is an attempt where uh, scientists are um, uh, moving uh, towards the green synthesis of these nanoparticles by using many biological mechanisms so uh, this increases the biocompatibility and also the environmental benign properties of the nanoparticle and this way it makes it a preferred choice over the uh, usually uh, chemical uh, based nanoparticles next slide ma'am so these are the different shapes of nanoparticles now you can see here in the slide that the nanoparticle particles uh, could be of cylindrical shapes uh, some somewhere it can be seen as a spherical shaped particles sometimes they are square sometimes they are triangular and all uh, next slide ma'am this we can do by using many uh, electroscope uh, many uh, microscopic methods like same time ftir and all so why plants now plants contains many important pharmacological constituents uh, which can be utilized as a reducing agents and this changes the metal into its zero oxidation states now this causes the clustering of these metal particles with other atoms and then after the functional groups from the fibro constituents or those atoms would coated and acts as a capping agent now we also know that plant extracts are uh, plant extract contained abundant amount of biomolecules such as proteins sugars amino acids enzymes and other trace uh, traces of metals now this metabolites also can be used as a strong uh, strong reducing agent for the making of a nanoparticle next slide please ma'am next slide yes here we can see in a diagrammatic form that how plant extracts can be utilized for the synthesis of nanoparticles now the plant material has been taken and its extract has been utilized for and mixed with the silver salt and the reduction process starts and this way you can see here in a red color that small silver nanoparticles have been synthesized and these silver nanoparticles as they are now coated with the phyto constituents or the functional groups responsible for various activities are coated onto the nanoparticles can now be utilized as antifungal agents anti cancerous properties antiviral agents anti leishmaniasis properties also they have and also can be utilized as antibacterial agents this happens because uh, when plant extracts reduce the metal nanoparticles they are converted into a smaller size particles so the smaller is the size of the particle the better would be its penetration power and better would be its toxicity and this way green synthesis approach can be utilized for the formation 
of nanoparticles and here why plant is being utilized because it acts as it uh, has the dual effect it acts both as capping as well as a reducing agent and it increases the pharmacological effectiveness of the nanoparticle next slide please now okay here we can see how a nanoparticle gets coated or capped with many biogenic uh, molecules. Now you can see fatty acid is there, peptide bond is there, or hydroxyl group, cyanide group, uh, then carbonyl group is there, sulfidyl group is there. Here, this way, many of the constituents, even the functional groups, gets uh, can be coated by using variety of different technologies uh, to and can make them to cap onto the uh, nanoparticle surface just to increase their therapeutic applications. Now here. Here in this different types of fields, uh, these plant-based nanoparticles are being utilized uh, for the therapeutic for their therapeutic applications. So now this slide represents the roles of various functional groups of biomolecules in the capping and therapeutic improvements of nanoparticles. Next slide, please, ma'am. These are some of the plant-based nanoparticles which are synthesized. Not only this, there are many, but I'm showing only uh, this much and also going to cover a few of them. Next slide, please, ma'am. Okay, so this is the first case study which I'm going to discuss with you, uh, which is the uh, which uh, which has been prepared by utilizing gold. Now, gold nanoparticles have been synthesized by using uh, vegetable waste from household uh, from capsic capsicum annum. Now, leaf extracts of these plants were utilized for the synthesis of nanoparticles, and this is the experimental setup or the results that were obtained by the group of the scientists. And this is a very recent study where they observed its MIC value, that is minimum inhibition concentration values, where uh, they utilized the uh, antibiotics, then uh, the uh, metal itself, and then the uh, nanoparticle which was synthesized by using plant extract, meaning. Uh, plant extract based uh, metal nanoparticles. So you can see in case of antibiotic, it needs higher concentration to inhibit the growth of the microorganism. Now these were the four microorganisms which were tested and the different strains are also represented here. Also in case of metal alone, you can see metal nanoparticles also shows a good antibiotic, uh, antibacterial or antimicrobial activity in a lesser concentration. But then you can say here, uh, when, in, uh, when we study this in case of uh, gold nanoparticle, you can see very minimum concentration is required and it has the great effectivity. Next slide please move. Okay, the next nanoparticle is palladium nanoparticle, which was synthesized by utilizing the plant extract from Garcinia pedunculata. Again, the leaf extract was utilized, and here they tested it by uh, with the help of a agar plate well diffusion method. And here they utilized it against uh, the uh, multiple drug resistant bacteria that is Tornobacter sakazaki. Now, this bacteria in two strains, I, when I was reviewing, uh, it, it is um, also found that this bacteria, one strain of this bacteria is also um, resistant to 14 different types of antibiotics. So, so they studied uh, this uh, activity of uh, palladium nanoparticles prepared from Garcinia pedunculata on this uh, uh, microorganism and they uh, obtained the good zone of inhibition around the wells. Next slide please. Now. Okay, this is their experimental results. Here you can see clearly that three uh, wells have been prepared where in one case, palladium acetate has been uh, poured in another plant extracts are poured and you can see the clear and visible big zone of inhibition in case of palladium nanoparticles. Next slide please. Okay, the third one is the silver nanoparticle synthesis from uh, the uh, plant extract of Cinnamomum camphora. Uh, here, uh, silver nanoparticles uh, have been effective also against cancerous cells and also against many microorganisms because uh, due to their positive charge, they can easily get uh, added over the uh, cell surfaces of positive, uh, positive uh, cell surfaces of bacteria, and they preferably choose to bind with the proteins by utilizing functional group SH, which is available with the cysteine amino acid. Then this silver nanoparticles activity is also uh, observed against the fungus where they inhibit fungal cell growth by proton pump damage. Next slide please. 
okay this is one of the mechanism utilized by many of the uh, nanoparticles for the uh, for causing the cell death where uh, we uh, where it is represented that how it increases the reactive reactive oxygen species and this uh, oxidative stress then causes many of the cell constituents to damage like here when nanoparticle enters inside the cell you can see its effect on uh, mitochondrial membrane it also disrupts the electron transport chain mechanism again here uh, you can see it uh, disrupts the cell wall of a bacterial uh, bacteria then it can also cause protein damage again uh, the reactive oxygen species can bind uh, with uh, dna and they also can uh, cause breakage in dna this way many of the uh, effects uh, due to the uh, rise of ros that is reactive oxygen species can lead ultimately to the apoptosis of the cell death next slide please no? okay now the last uh, example is uh, about uh, copper nanoparticles now this uh, copper nanoparticles have been synthesized by using uh, the species that uh, sorry that should be uh, magnolia virginiana uh, now the copper nanoparticle size they obtained was 37 to 110 nanometer and here also you can see they have studied it against e coli and the chemical method is also used uh, as the biological methods are used for the preparation of uh, plant based nanoparticles and they have also synthesized it by utilizing different uh, temperature ranges, again with different concentration of leaf extracts. Here is the percentage of antimicrobial activity they have shown, and here is the average particle size. Now, as I said in one of the slides earlier, you can see that with the 37 nanometer particle size, they have obtained 99% of antibacterial activity, which actually is uh, in uh, uh, reflects the um, statement that uh, smaller the particle size, uh, better will be the uh, toxicity. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the last one. Uh, now, also uh, again, this is about the silver nanoparticle, uh, sorry, copper nanoparticles. And uh, the species that have been used for the making of these nanoparticles are Citrus medica and again, this Acalypha indica. Actually, this plant we can observe around us many a times. In childhood, also, we used to play with these uh, leaves. Uh, it makes a certain sound when we tap it. So, uh, this was all about the uh, antibacterial uh, or antimicrobial study of many plant extracts derived in nanoparticles. And that's all from my side. Now, next slide, please. Okay, so in conclusion, I just want to say that many metal nanoparticles are there, but they are toxic. So, just to reduce their toxicity, there is an attempt to make the plant based nanoparticles. And as we have discussed, few of the cases where we can clearly show that they have obtained the antimicrobial activities by synthesizing. Uh, plant-based nanoparticles. So, in India also, in our uh, surroundings, we have many such species which have antimicrobial properties. So, we can just utilize them for the synthesis of nanoparticles. Also, in India, this work is being extensively uh, carried Hello. 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 Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. That's that's all from my side. Yes, yes. Thank you, madam. Very nice work. And thank you so much. Thank you. Also well. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Next, uh, Sandhya, madam. Doctor Sandhya, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. present mm -hmm. ki main yahan se karu? Uh, jaise bhi bolye, madam. Maine aapko bhi beja hua hai. Mere paas bhi hai. Ji, ma'am. Main kar deti hu. Koi kam. Nee. Jaise aap bolye, yahan se bhi convenient hai mujhe. Okay. Uh, Dekhe recent wala mujhe chahiye na Sunday. Ha, ye wala 16 September wala. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Dikhra hai PPT? Ha, madam. I am oh. audible, no? Yes, yes. Ah, madam, we can make it slideshow. Yes, yes. Yeah, please start. Uh, good afternoon, respected Dongarwar sir, Preeti ma'am, and my dear teacher participants. 
myself dr sandhya mulchandani assistant professor in department of macrobiology shrimati chm college ulhasnagar mumbai ma'am next hello ma'am okay the topic of my presentation is assessment of chromium bioremediation potential of pgpr that is plant growth promoting rhizobia or bio fertilizing microbes isolated from soil and sewage next ma'am pgprs are nothing but plant growth promoting rhizobia which are widespread in nature that is in sewage and soil most of them are chemo organotrophs they are gram variable in reaction and they are nutritionally versatile reported to degrade several compounds including hexavalent chromine here i would like to say that i had selected one organism that is orthobacter and did a detailed study of it uh, the role of pgpr in agriculture is they are phytostimulators abiotic stress they can tolerate abiotic stress they can function as biopesticides ma'am just one click i have given animated and they can function as bio fertilizers so here the organism selected is orthobacter and the property of the pgprs used is that of bio fertilizers in that also phosphate solubilization there are three types of bio fertilizing properties npk of that the phosphate solubilization has been used organism being orthobacter as can be seen in the diagram it has beautiful rod to coccus morphogenesis next ma'am what are bio fertilizers they are substitutes for chemical fertilizers they raise the fertility of soil and production of crops then pgpr solubilizes phosphate promotes crop germination and hence it functions as bio fertilizer at the same time it can bio remediate or detoxify the earth which has been poisoned by harmful chemicals that means they are essentially cleansers of the environment the pgpr are helpful in developing a long term cost effective and environmental friendly bio remediation strategy hence pgprs could be exploited for carrying out bio fertilization as well as bio remediation next ma'am experimental design and their outcomes first isolation and identification of pgpr with the help of phase contrast microscopy biochemicals and 16s 16s r rna gene analysis the results of which are seen as isolation madam my cursor is seen yes ma'am yes yes sir results of these are yeah results of these are isolation on plate phase contrast microscopy these biochemicals and 16s r rna analysis next ma'am the best strains were selected for uh, further study now these strains showed the maximum phosphate solubilization property as can be seen from the diagram starting from second day to eighth day the amount of phosphate solubilization increased and this was observed in lab so based on this a bio fertilizer was formulated next ma'am now in bio fertilizer formulation used was kaolin clay calcium carbonate gum arabic and the suspension of the organism that is orthobacter grown in the orthobac or oh, sorry in pikovskis medium madam a click for animation all of these were mixed together to form a slurry then they were allowed to place there for 24 hours so that the number of organisms increased to 10 raised to 6 after that seeds of vigna radiata that is our moong seeds madam another week after the period of curing wherein the number of organisms was allowed to increase this prepared slurry was applied on the surface of the vigna radiata seeds then again they were allowed to dry in shade for 24 to 48 hours so that the pellets can be formed 
Now here we can see two types of seeds. I have not presented two types, but I am only talking about one seed that is Vigna radiator. Now after formation of pellets, these pellets were sowed in the pots. About six different pots were taken with equal amount of soil. Now all of the pots were simulated with calcium phosphate except the first one. The first one contained the normal soil. After that, all the pots were simulated with calcium phosphate. The second pot, Madam, next week. The second pot contained calcium phosphate, but none of the isolates were added to it. The third contained isolate one. That means it was simulated with the selected isolate one. Then fourth one with the selected isolate two. And the fifth one had the consortium of both one and two. And the sixth one contained the chemical fertilizer. So these are the results which were obtained after day seven, day 14 and day 21. The results were measured in the uh, form of phosphate solubilized, then root weight, root weight, shoot weight, root length, shoot length, number of leaves, size of leaves, germination rate, germination percentage and absolute growth rate. So it was found that these organisms can be good biofertilizers. Next ma'am. These organisms were also assessed for their qualitative and quantitative biodegradative potential using all these compounds, maybe in inorganic pollutants, organic organochlorines, dyes, petroleum products and so on. Next, ma'am. As I said, the two best ones detected. So during a screening time, the, all the isolates, uh, most of the isolates showed extensive biodegradative profile. We can see here some of them could degrade up to 18 out of the 19, 19 compounds tested. And quantitatively, they could completely degrade some of the pollutants more than 90%. As you can see, these are the results of chromium degradation, these of dye and some organic compounds were also used. Next, ma'am. These organisms, one more click. These organisms were also found to be eco-competent as they could survive under the stress factors of extreme, uh, before that, uh, yeah, this one. Uh, that is, they could survive under stress factors such as extreme pH, temperature, salt concentration, starvation, desiccation, and also in the presence of antibiotics. So out of the 12 antibiotics used, uh, some of them could grow uh, in, in presence of eight, eight antibiotics and the other one could grow in the presence of 10 antibiotics and these were used for both gram positive and gram negative organisms. Next one. Then coming to hexavalent chromium, how is it harmful to plants? Now it can affect the germination, root growth, stem growth, leaf growth, then finally biological yield, grain yield and total biomass. Chromium was selected because in reports it was found that this orthobacter can degrade chromium very well, maybe up to 99 to 100%. Next, ma'am. Uh, three clicks. Uh, a similar type of pot experiment was uh, carried out where in chromium was simulated in the soil in the pots. It was simulated in the form of potassium dichromate. Here the five pots were taken, the first one being the control, where in no culture was inoculated and all the pots contained potassium dichromate. Chromium was added in the form of dichromate. The second pot contained uh, dichromate plus isolate one. The third one isolate plus uh, dichromate, isolate two plus dichromate, and the last one contained consortium of both and dichromate. Here the readings were taken every five days, so five, 10, 15, 20 days. So the seeds which were used were that of the white kidney beans, as can be seen in the diagram, the chavali seeds, they were uh, inoculate, they were sowed in the pots and the results were obtained in the form of chromium concentration 
about 100 mcg of the chromium was simulated in the soil and other results observed were again dry weight wet weight root length shoot length absolute growth rate and germination rate ma'am next So these are some of the results which were obtained. That is chromium reduction percentage wise, dry weight, it increased, wet weight, it increased. So these bars represent the number of the pots. Five pots were used. So results are according to the pots. And it was observed that up to 95.8% of chromium was reduced by the consortium at the end of 10th day. After 10th day, the results became, came out as the same. And 75.7% uh, .7 of chromium was reduced by isolate 2 and 86% by isolate 1 individually. So from this, we can conclude that these organisms can be used for bio, as biofertilizer as well as for bioremediation. Ma'am, next slide. What are the benefits to the society? Society can get the biofertilizer formulations, a semi-dried granular product which will contain the phosphate solubilizing PGPR culture. This product will be cost effective, easily manageable, eco-friendly, leading to zero waste. Then bioremediation by PGPR makes the contaminated sites available for plantation, thus enhancing the crop productivity. One organism can degrade a multitude of persistent pollutants. Next, ma'am. In the future prospects, since this is a novel concept and Attractive technology, this message should be promoted in agricultural and environmental sectors. Of course, more of field studies are needed to be carried out. There can be strains, uh, potent strains which can be developed containing the PGPR, which will act as biofertilizer. Along with it, we can have that organism uh, which will have the desirable pollutant degrading capabilities. Like here we use the chromium. Say some other pollutant is present in that environment and the organism as we observed had a bio, uh, extensive biodegradative potential. So required pollutant can be uh, associated with the biofertilizer. More of consortiums can be employed and uh, more of uh, modernized bioreactors need, are needed to be designed. We also need to improve the field application methods. Then regeneration of biomass is required for use in futures and nano biofertilizers can also be prepared. Uh, one, uh, Madam, one benefit to the society I think was hidden, like it supports the growth of azotobacter and rhizobia. It is not appearing in the slide. So these organisms support the growth of other biofertilizing bacteria also. Next slide, ma'am. These are some of the references which I have used. And next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandha, madam. Very good. Nice work. Any question from the participants? Okay. Dr. Shilpa Mankar, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Thank madam. You. Thank you, madam. Yes, madam, I'm here. Yeah. And uh, I have sent you a revised PPT today. Are you sharing that one? Uh, yes. Let me check. Shama Kanchan. Shilpa, madam, eight minutes. No, sixteen. Yes, ma'am, that one. 
Yes, ma'am. Please start. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Shilpa Mankar, Assistant Professor and Head Department of Microbiology, Dr. Arjuvar Arts, Commerce and Science College, Selu, District Vardha. I'm delivering my seminar in this refresher course organized by UGC, HRDC, Rashtra Santa Tukuruji Maharaj, Nagpur University, Nagpur on food spoilage, microbial identification and its isolation techniques. In my uh, topic, just I will focus on uh, the two terms, food spoilage and the different uh, techniques uh, regarding to the identification of the microorganisms. Ma'am, please, next. These are the contents of my topic. Ma'am, next. So when we are talking about the food microbiology, so here the microorganisms are responsible to make the food, uh, to spoil the food and the certain uh, diseases transmission also. So this is the most uh, diverse area within the field of microbiology and it is concerning with the public health. So food safety, uh, its production, its processing, its preservation and storage is very much important when uh, it's a term to regarding with this uh, food microbiology. Ma'am, next. Next, so uh, these are the contamination of the food and uh, that are responsible for the spoilage of food. So there are uh, microorganisms are everywhere in the environment uh, that are present in the air, water, sewage, soil, everywhere. And uh, certain uh, equipments and uh, the utensils are also contaminated with the microorganisms uh, by the food handlers, the transporting system, the food processing, and the different plants and animals itself also contaminated with the microorganisms. So that these are the natural resources, natural sources uh, that are contaminated to uh, food. Ma'am, next. Certain characteristics of the food spoilage, uh, that certain uh, parameters are responsible for the spoilage uh, that are uh, comes under the physical spoilage uh, that uh, contain temperature, pH, light, mechanical damage, etc. Again, certain chemicals like enzymes are also responsible for this food spoilage and that are coming under the chemical spoilage. Uh, certain microorganisms are also responsible for the food spoilage and uh, that are called the microbial uh, spoilage. Other than this, some insects, rodents, animals, birds, uh, these are also responsible for the food spoilage. Ma'am, next one. There are certain causes of this food spoilage uh, if uh, there will there will be improper storage temperature, the storage time, uh, the storage uh, certain, and the failure of the separate foods. Again, the inadequate uh, food safety uh, standard methods. Again, the excessive delays of uh, storing of uh, that. Uh, again, the action of some food enzymes like autoenzymes, some uh, insect rodents, uh, certain uh, physical structures of the food uh, like uh, means any it changes will be there that are freezing, burning, drying at the time of eating. So these are uh, coming under the causes of the food spoilage. Ma'am, next. These are some uh, spoilage signs of the food. If uh, it, its uh, order will be changed, again, its texture and its uh, color, color appearance also change. So at that time, uh, we can recognize that uh, food is uh, spoiled. And next one. Certain microorganisms in the food sample, so uh, it may be harmful uh, harmful to that uh, particular food. Uh, it may be harmless to that particular food. Uh, some are pathogen, uh, some are contains the pathogenic, some uh, pathogenic microorganisms, and some are beneficial microorganisms. So if we are talking about the food spoilage, obviously that, that are uh, coming under the harmful microorganisms are present in that. Uh, it may bacteria, it may yeast, protozoa, viruses, and molds. Uh, these are some uh, species of microorganisms are responsible for the food spoilage. And next one. These are about the food spoilage, but uh, there are lots of techniques uh, to identify that particular microorganisms in that particular food samples. So these are some techniques. I will elaborate it one by one. Ma'am, next. First is the direct microscopic count. So in that, uh, the simple staining techniques will be there and the simple staining and some differential stainings we can apply for this. 
actually this uh, direct microscopic count are uh, mostly uh, used uh, in the dairy industry uh, for assessing the quality of raw milk and the other dairy products uh, just you have to take the smear of that particular spoiled food as a specimen and uh, stain it so you can uh, observe it under the microscope by the oil immersion objective so uh, we can determine the different microorganisms by this technique then next one it having uh, some advantages and disadvantages of uh, that particular technique. So it is the rapid and simple technique, cell morphology also uh, uh, assess there, but uh, certain uh, means uh, viable and both uh, non viable viable cultures are enumerated by this technique. But uh, I wanted to share you one thing that a VBNC state means viable but non culturable bacteria cannot be uh, determined by this technique. So this is uh, one more advantage. Disadvantage advantage of this technique now next one again uh, certain uh, breeding counts, the slide method using uh, the tetrazoleum salt and again the Howard mold count so, so these are some additional uh, techniques regarding to this uh, previous technique now next one Next technique is the aerobic plate count. Again, the another name of that, that is standard plate count. So uh, here uh, yeah, by this technique uh, we can uh, we can get uh, the viable count of the microorganism present in that particular food. Uh, so uh, because uh, there are different microorganisms and uh, the temperature means the incubation time and the temperature uh, are different uh, for the uh, every specific microorganism. So according to that, uh, we can apply this technique uh, for the identification of that particular microorganisms by this technique. It again having some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so it is. Uh, it is uh, useful for the viable count and uh, this is the sensitive uh, method but uh, when the suspension is not homogenized so it is difficult to uh, enumerate the microorganisms from this technique now next one again certain types of standard uh, plate uh, count method uh, like pore plate method spread plate method and the stick plate method so these are the different uh, standard plate count uh, uh, which are forming means uh, uh, which are responsible uh, to which are responsible uh, which are uh, generally used for the uh, determination of the particular microorganism from that specimen and uh, the colony forming units uh, in this uh, uh, per ml so we have to uh, determine that number of colonies uh, for the dilution factor so we can enumerate such kind of bacteria by this technique okay and next one the most probable number uh, so this is the statistical method to determine the number of uh, microorganisms in that particular specimen so turbidity gas production and the acid production are observed uh, to determine the different kinds of microorganisms on this and uh, it having some uh, three steps that are presumptive confirmative and the completed test are involved in that now well, next one Microscope colony count. So in that uh, we have to detect uh, the microbial count in the variety of food. It involves the counting of uh, colonies that are developed in the micro slide uh, as a thin layer culture medium. So this is the another uh, technique to uh, determine the micro microbial count in that particular food sample. And next one. Uh, so this is uh, the another name of that that serial dilution method so the di this dilution series followed by the dropping plating method and uh, when food is homogenized by the uh, in the particular tube uh, in melted agar so at that time we have to uh, enumerate that uh, particular microorganisms present in the food sample by this uh, conventional plate method uh, as as uh, uh, comparing with the single species one next one. The dry film method again, uh, we have to uh, determine the micro microorganisms in that particular food uh, by the film technique. Uh, so food, just you have to uh, put the uh, food product uh, that coating material uh, and uh, after drying it the coated food products uh, we have to uh, measure the different uh, microbial count in that particular petri film and uh, this uh, specially uh, enumerate uh, the coliform that is the group of microorganisms. Now next one. 
certain dye reduction uh, test uh, that is methylene blue dye reduction test are also involved in such kind of techniques to enumerate the microorganisms uh, from the food sample uh, where the dye is reduced uh, by the particular microorganisms if microorganisms are present in that particular uh, food sample like uh, milk raw milk uh, so the uh, rapid test that is resazurin reduction test also involved in that uh, this is uh, and very less uh, it had taken the uh, very less time and uh, means so the particular microorganisms present in that milk reduce the particular dye if that microorganisms are present in that particular specimen and next one so these are having some advantages and disadvantages uh, because every um, uh, every microorganisms are not responsible to reduce that particular dye so that microorganisms are not uh, uh, enumerated by this uh, technique ma'am next one on uh, the roll tubes uh, and how many slides are remaining bas bas ma'am ek hi reh gayi hai so the excellent methods to enumerate the fastidious anaerobic bacteria are also involved by this technique certain chemical and molecular biological techniques like this again uh, certain serological methods are also discussed by this uh, different techniques these are some references thank you uh, thank you respected organizers dr nitin singh dr priti madam and uh, all the participants thank you so much ma'am thank you so much dr shilpa ma'am thank you ma'am next uh, dr kshama kshama yes ma'am yes yes ma'am i am here Yes, ma'am. Can you see? Yes, ma'am. Oh, please start. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Dr. Kshama Murarkar, Assistant Professor, Dr. R. G. Boyer, Arts, Commerce, and Science College, Sailu Varda. So, uh, I am presenting the topic, uh, Pisidium gujavalius, a potential cariogenic agent. So, first we see the introduction. All of you know the. plants are uh, very important uh, medicinal properties uh, we are also using these plants as a medicinal practice from ancient time and they are also be accepted as a uh, home remedies and uh, because of the various types of beneficial chemical compounds are present in in the plants the there is a development of they are also be used in the development of new drugs and for pharmacological research and development ma'am next please so uh, pisidium gujava uh, that is uh, uh, nothing but a jala apan peru manto so this is a therapeutic plant and it belongs to the family myritici it contains near about 133 genera and uh, more than 300 uh, 3800 plants this is a folk medicine and is used to treat as well as manage various types of diseases next please ma'am uh there are various medicinal uses of this plant so uh, the reported are the antioxidant as a hepatoprotective agent it is a anti allergic uh, as well as it is used for the anti geno uh, genotic anti plasmodium then uh, anti inflammatory anti diabetic and most important is the anti uh nociceptive that is the sensation in teeth activities it is also be used in the cardioactive and anticoagulant agents also apart from that it is also be used in the treatment of sore throat as well as vomiting and menstrual complications skin sores and in wounds also ma'am next please uh so we are focusing on the dental caries so this is the major health uh, oral problem oral problem and uh, nowadays this is very common chronic disease in children as well as in adults so it is caused by the microorganism which lives in the dental plaques and uh, generally they uh, make the cavities by lowering the ph 
below the critical point and the microorganisms which are mostly present in the uh, there is a streptococcus mutant streptococcus sorbitus uh, sorbina sorry uh, and these these two are present in the initial stages uh, apart from that staphylococcus aureus and candida albicans is also be the part of microbial flora mouth microbial flora next please ma'am so during the experiment we have uh, isolated the oral pathogens so two pathogens we have isolated so streptococcus species and staphylococcus aureus was isolated from the mouth and we have studied their uh, morphological as well as biochemical and cultural characteristics uh, this strain candida albicans we are procured and uh, after that we have maintain all the strains and subculture regularly for our experiments next please ma'am so uh, for the experiment we have prepared various uh, types of the uh, pcdm uh, gajava leaves extract so uh, the first type was aqueous extract in which we have taken the fresh leaf and water in 1 is to 10 concentration then extraction in succulate apparatus here we have used the ethanol and acetone uh, and dry leaves was used then we have also extracted the leaves with uh, acetone, uh, sorry, uh, acid, uh, ethanol and propanol at room temperature. Then uh, DMSO solvent, that is the dimethyl sulfoxide, was also be used in the extraction. And uh, ampicillin uh, drug was also used, which we were used, uh, dissolved in the uh, DMSO solvent. Ma'am, next, please. Uh, after the extraction, we have. Uh, for antimicrobial activity was checked for this. So in this case, we have used the Muller Hinto Nagar. We have prepared the inoculum of this uh, three different types of microorganism, that is the Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus species, and Candida albicans in the uh, nutrient broth. Uh, in case of Streptococcus species, nutrient broth with 0.4% sucrose and Candida albicans in separate dextrose agar. So here. We have taken the 24 hours culture and uh, uh, taken uh, inoculated in 25 ml of pre sterilized agar, uh, sorry, uh, nutrient medium, and then incubated at their optimum condition. This uh, inoculum we have sprayed on the separate MHA plate, and then uh, the 0.1 ml of extracts were added in separate wells, uh, which was having the diameter 2 mm. The control was also said we incubated all the plates at an optimum condition. Next, please, ma'am. Uh, we also uh, carried out the phytochemical analysis of extract. In this uh, case, we have uh, tasted uh, all the extracts for tannin and the uh, flavonoids. So the ferric chloride taste was performed in this case. Next, please, ma'am. Uh, the uh, after the uh, incubation period, we have observed the result. So, uh, in case of uh, aqueous extract of fresh values, we have seen the antimicrobial activity that is zone diameter was greater in case of Candida albicans, followed by Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus species. Next, please, ma'am. Uh, uh, in case of can Candida albicans and Staphylococcus aureus, uh, where we have taken the cold extract in ethanol and propanol and uh, succulate extract of ethanol and acetone. So here uh, we have seen the zone of inhibition in fresh propanol uh, was greater, followed by our dry succulate et acetone extract and fresh ethanol extract. In case of uh, Staphylococcus aureus, the uh, zone of inhibition was greater in fresh ethanol extract followed by the dry succulate ethanol extract and dry succulate acetone extract. There were no growth in case of fresh propanol extract. Next, please. Ma uh, in case of streptococcus species, uh, we have seen the dry acetone succulate extract has shown the greater zone of inhibition followed by your fresh ethanol extract 
and dry channel extract. Uh, the less zone of inhibition was there in fresh propanol extract. Next, please, ma'am. Uh, we have also seen the antimicrobial activity of uh, the extracts uh, which were uh, we isolated in the uh, DMSO solvent. So we were prepared the 50 milligram per ml, 100 milligram per ml, 200 and 400 milligram per ml of the uh, that extracts of plant in DMSO. And uh, uh, here in case of Candida albicans, Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus species, uh, you can see the zone diameter was uh, mostly uh, in uh, Candida albicans and Streptococcus species was nearly uh, greater in case of uh, 100 milligram per ml. The exception was there in case of the Staphylococcus aureus, but there was very minor difference in this case. Next, please, ma'am. Uh, this is the uh, graph of uh, uh, graph which, show, which which is showing the antimicrobial activity of ampicillin which was dissolved in the DMSO and the concentration of that uh, drug was 50 milligram per ml and 100 milligram per ml. So in this case we have seen the candida albicans have not shown any type of activity uh, because this is an antibacterial drug and uh, uh, streptococcus species have shown the greater a zone diameter that is 30 and 34 mm and in, followed by the staphylococcus aureus. Next, please, ma'am. Uh, the this is the result of our uh, taste, which is done for the tannins and flavonoids, and we have seen all the extracts were positive for the uh, that uh, tannin as well as flavonoid components. Next, please, ma'am. So uh, all the extracts of Pisidium gachava have shown the antimicrobial activity against the selected oral pathogens. And uh, the reason behind this was the ingredients which are present in the extract and the diffusion capacity of the muller into nagar, uh, which, uh, which has given that zone of inhibition. And uh, uh, here we can see that this extract was also be effective or in case of it was most effective against candida albicans also and this is the remarkable feature of this uh, pisidium gajava leaves extract and uh, uh, as this, this is a uh, this uh, extract has shown the antifungal activity so uh, this this is a potential agent to use the antifungal as well as antibacterial agent and uh, the presence of tannins as well as flavonoids, which was shown in the table, uh, also uh, reported to inhibit the growth of many fungi, yeast, and bacteria. So uh, this is the uh, the combination of this component, or maybe the single component, is responsible for this antibacterial or antifungal agent. So the further research is going on on this thing. So we have drawn. Uh, Next, please, ma'am. So then uh, we have drawn the conclusion that he, this is this plant leaves uh, have extracts have a great potential as an antibacterial as well as antifungal agent, and this is very useful uh, property. Uh, so we can use to treat as a oral pathogens, and uh, this is a very alter we can use as an alternative medicine for the treatment of oral microbial infections in the initial stages. And it has a great potential in case of pharmacological products. So this is all about my topic. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Dr. Shama Murarkar. Thank you, ma'am. हेलो यस सर हां प्रीति मैम हां बोलिए हां प्लीज शेयर माय स्लाइड ना यस ये वो बंद कर दो ऐसे
Yes, sir. PPT this time? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please stand. Eight minutes. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, a very warm good morning, uh, good afternoon to uh, one and all present here. Uh, with the due respect of uh, respected uh, Dr. Dete, sir, Director UGC, HRDC Nagpur, uh, RTM in Nagpur University, Nagpur, uh, Dr. Priti Dharmik, Madam, and uh, my dear colleagues. Uh, I am Dr. Rakesh Thakre, Assistant Professor and Head, Department of Microbiology, Ashwantara Chahan College, Lakhandur, District Bhandara. Uh, here to uh, present my seminar on the uh, one of the my uh, students' uh, dissertation, MSc dissertation topic that is biodegradation, decolorization, and biodegradation of textile dyes with immobilized lacase enzyme. Madam, Baki participant, please mute. I'm, next slide, please. So, is... uh, today I'm going to uh, cover some uh, topics uh, like introduction to the problem. What is the intro, uh, what is the problem? Wa solution over the problem. Uh, some introduction about lacase enzyme methods and results. Then we will see production of lacase enzyme from fungal strains, immobilization of crude lacase enzymes, uh, preparation of column for decolorization, biodegradation of reactive dyes. Immo uh, by immobilized lacquers, and then we will uh, discuss the results on uh, of the confirmation of biodegradation and biodecolorization uh, uh, of dyes by using GCMS, followed by discussion and conclusion. So, the problem is that uh, everybody knows dyes have been used increasingly in the textile dyes, uh, textile and dyeing industries because of their ease, ease and cost effectiveness in synthesis firmness and variety in color compared to that of the natural dyes. But what actually happened is that approximately 50% of the dyes are released in the industrial effluent without treatment and the presence of even very, very, very low concentration of such untreated dyes in the effluent is highly visible and degraded, uh, de partial degraded product of that uh, dye, the textile dyes are found to be carcinogenic to the aquatic flora as well as for human beings who consume this water. So to come up with the uh, solution, uh, we decided to go with the fungi from Basidomycet groups, uh, which is also known as white rot fungi, which shows uh, which shown uh, potential for the bioremediation. Uh, for example, phenorichids, primates, and pleuritus are by far the most efficient and uh, efficient lignolytic microorganism because of the high lacase enzyme production. Pleuritus fungi have been used in microremediation of pollutants such as uh, petroleum, polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons because of their higher lacase production. Now, we will discuss about lacase. Lacase, what is lacase? Lacase is the uh, enzyme belonging to the group phenol oxidase. Uh, concerning with the mode of action of the lacase enzyme, so lacase is very, uh, have very broad spe substrate specificity with respect to the electron donor. What uh, lacase did is that uh, it catalyzes the removal of hydrogen atom from the hydroxyl group of ortho and para substitute, uh, substituted mono and uh, polyphenolic substrates, uh, which are present in the dyes and uh, form, uh, uh, from aromatic amino acids by one electron abstraction to form the free radicals, which is further capable of undergoing the further depolymerization, repolymerization, demethylation, and quinone formation. Madam, next slide, please. So. Now we will discuss uh, what methodologies and results uh, we have gone through. Uh, first, uh, production of lacase enzyme from fungal strains. For this purpose, uh, we have selected uh, three test organisms, namely Pleuritus pulmonarius, Bartalinia species, Rhizopus oryzii, and uh, a reference strain, which uh, Trematus hirsuta, which were procured from the uh, Pune NCL. And the rest of the three uh, uh, test organisms were isolated uh, from white rot fungus, uh, or what we can say the wooden material, which caused rots. And uh, uh, have uh, sequenced that bacteria, uh, identified that bacteria on the molecular basis, and the sequences were submitted into the uh, EMBL European uh, laboratory of, and got the accession number even. So what we did is that uh, we uh, cultivate all these four uh, organisms, test organism, according to the Abdullah et al. 
uh, under which method we use uh, 100 ml of the wheat bran media uh, was prepared into 50 ml of the flask for each organism and the respective flasks were then inoculated with 1 gram weight weight of the 72 hours culture of the organisms the flask then uh, were incubated at 28 plus minus 2 degrees celsius and uh, the uh, flask were um, uh, incubated uh, at 150 uh, revolution per minute for 10 days after 10 days, the content of the flask were filtered and centrifuged at 8000 RPM for 20 minutes. The whatever superintendent was uh, we got used as a crude source of lacase enzyme. Uh, we used only crude enzyme in the, this study as we were not able to um, isolate the pure form of the enzyme or crystallize the We were not able to crystallize the enzyme. The supernatant obtained from this uh, uh, previous step was subjected to the protein estimation by the Barford method and the table uh, showing the estimation of the Barford um, protein by Barford method of Trematisus uh, uh, shows the 0.7 milligram per ml. Lim, uh, Pluritus pulmonaria shows 0.1 milligram per ml. Bartanilla shows 0.6 milligram per ml and Rhizopus shows higher amount of the lacase that is 1.5 milligram per ml. Then uh, we lead to the immobilization of crude lacase enzyme by the simple uh, sodium alginate uh, method. Uh, for this, uh, aliquots uh, containing 3 milligram protein were then slowly added in the 100 ml of the sodium alginate and the slurry was prepared. The slurry was then taken in a 5 ml syringe, uh, then uh, sodium alginate and crude lacase slurry uh, was then added drop wise into the 2 percent calcium. Uh, chloride solution kept on the uh, kept on my magnetic stirrer. A large number of volumes uh, volume of the spherical beads were prepared, and uh, after suitable decantation, the beads were washed by the acetate buffer of pH five. Next slide, ma'am. Then uh, we lead to the preparation of the column for decolor uh, decolorization purpose. Uh, for that purpose, we uh, a series of column of size of fifteen centimeter by one centimeter were set on the clamp stands as we can able to see from this diagram uh, photographs uh, each column was washed thoroughly with the phosphate buffer of uh, ph5 the columns were filled with filled with and washed beads uh, up to the height of five centimeter after beads filling the column was charged with acetate buffer of ph5 and the runnings were taken out uh, photographic uh, photographs of the column are shown in the uh, photograph we can able to see in this uh, reactive red MHB dye, reactive green MHB dye and effluent uh, uh, which were taken from the uh, Raymond factory near uh, Borgao near uh, near Sonsar. So next slide ma'am. Then we lead to the biodegradation of dyes by immobilized lacase. Uh, each column containing immobilized lacase from the respective taste organism and respect uh, reference organism was then charged with the dyes. In the present study, lacase from each organism was exposed to reactive red MHB, reactive green 19, and effluents separately. Why we choose this reactive red 9 MHB and reactive green 19 is uh, because uh, in Raymond uh, factory at Borgao, uh, near, situated near Sonsar MP, uh, they were used to uh, frequently use these two dyes, and uh, the uh, partial degraded products were found to be uh, present in the effluent. That's why we have selected both these dyes. For the reactive dyes, uh, the charging solution containing 100 milligram per liter of the dye where, uh, where the effluent was directly used without any uh, supplementation because effluent do have a number of the uh, nutrient media for the growth of fungus. The column was filled up to the 15 centimeter level and kept for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, 3 ml of the effluent was taken out and optical density was measured at respect to lambda max absorption maximum absorption of the dye and the effluent the percent decolorization was calculated by using a uh, formula using uh, given by the jadhav 2009 and the formula is given here the results are shown in the photograph 2 shows decolorization of reactive red emet dye reactive green 19 dye and effluent by immobilized lacase from the all four test organism whatever the data we produced we uh, obtained grouped analysis were performed using two way anova tool and the statistical data is shown in figure 1 which shows the present uh, percent decolorization by immobilized lacase from basidomyces only and after uh, after 10 minutes and figure 2 shows the percent decolorization of the immobilized lacase 
from all the four organisms under study. Uh, why this comparison? We uh, uh, did uh, because of uh, we start initially started with the Bacidomyces fungi only. But uh, during uh, lactis production, we found uh, other uh, species of uh, fungus other than Bacidomyces, like Axinomyces and Zygomyces, were found to uh, produce high large number of the lactis. That's why we include that in our study. Then uh, we confirm uh, the biodegradation and biodecolorization of dyes by the GCMS spectra, that is gas chromatography mass spectra. Because, just uh, next slide, ma'am. Uh, if uh, all of you can able to see in this photographic uh, results, decolorization of reactive red emit uh, dye, reactive green 19 and influenced by immobilized lacus from all four organisms. But the, this this color differentiation uh, could not confirm the uh, uh, degradation of the dyes because it may be photo oxidation. So that's why uh, we go for the uh, confirmation by GCMS spectra. So you, uh, here we can able to see the four organisms uh, uh, producing the decolorization of red emet uh, dye, green dye and the effluent event. Next slide, ma'am. So uh, table two uh, shows the percent decolorization by the immobilized uh, enzyme after 10 minutes. Uh, here we are able to see the trematous suicida produces 32% decolorization of red emet dye, while 61% of the green 19 and 34% of in influent. Leuritus pulmonaris shows 40 around, 66 around in green and 38 around in effluent. So likewise, Bartolini also shows 40% uh, around uh, uh, of red uh, dye decolorization. In case of green, it shows around 57%, and effluent in, in case of illness, it shows the 38-33% uh, of the. While rhizopus shows uh, less uh, decolorization in re uh, reactive red emet dye, and reactive green 19 shows 58%, and so on. So figure one show, uh, shows the uh, bacidomyces uh, decolorization after 10 minutes. Figure two also shows the uh, all the uh, decolorization given by all four organisms in Consortia. Last slide, next slide, ma'am, uh, GCMS. So these are the uh, GCMS chromatogram of reactive red emet B dye treated with all the four organisms under study. So here we can able to see the number of gra uh, peaks showing the uh, confirmation of uh, degraded product from the dye. So in discussion, next slide, ma'am. Uh, it is, uh, we can conclude, uh, uh, it is confirmed from the GCMS analysis that primary and secondary amines were present in the degraded forms, along with the different acidic metabolites of reactive dyes, suggesting that the dye components are being degraded or transformed by the all four organisms under study. And thus, the formation of such amines is indicative of the degradation of dye. And this, uh, our study is in accordance with the Moeni workers, uh, which are quoted here. So GCMS analysis also shows the appearance of peaks corresponding to various compounds, including dodecamethyl, cyclohexazilisone, tetradiamethyl, cyclohexazilisone, and so on. But surprisingly, all these uh, components, uh, uh, the uh, peaks showing these corresponding uh, compounds, were not found in normal or controlled dye uh, GCMS analysis of the reactive red and reactive green dye that uh, confirms us the degradation and these product uh, these results are also in accordance with the number of uh, workers uh, already reported here last conclusion so the production of extracellular enzyme lacus uh, could be achieved using the wit bran medium that was uh, prepared by us and the protein estimation of the crude enzyme in this supernatant is sufficient enough for the immobilization Next, 3 mg of the immobilized protein significantly decolorizes the dyes in only 10 minutes. As far as the dye are concerned, the effect of the reactive red MHB, reactive green 19, and the effluent is considered very significant in all the four organisms. However, there is not much significance of the individual organisms in decolorization except rhizopus, rhizopus origia, which shows the significance difference between the reactive red MHB and reactive green dye, 19 dyes. So uh, these are the some uh, references uh, which uh, we have used during our study. It is not possible for uh, quote all the re references here. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rakesh Thakre, sir. Thanks, ma'am. Next, uh, Dr. Shishi Jambhokar, ma'am. 
Madam Hope, uh, it is uh, during time now. Yes, sir. Time? yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Please click once again. Just a minute, ma'am. Okay. Hmm. Yes, madam. Okay. A very good afternoon to the respected daughter, Ting Dome Vassal, Dr. Piti, ma'am. And all my dear colleagues from this literature course, which is conducted by UGC HRD University. Myself, Dr. Shashi Jamrukul, Head of Department of Microbiology, Shakti Science, Thomas, in these sessions. So, my topic is Antimicrobial Resistance Pattern Observed in Salmonella Species of Tumorous Sources. So before uh, proceeding my further slide, I just wanted to give an introduction about Salmonella, as you all know what is Salmonella, but a few descriptions I have wanted to uh, keep in front of you that, uh, first of all, some Salmonella comes under the genus of the family Enterobacteriaceae, which cause disease like typhoid fever and nine typhoid Salmonella cells. Salmonella was given by an American bacteriological name, the E. Salmon, so was first isolated Salmonella from protein intestine in 1884. Now, Salmonella, which is more than 2,500 different serotypes, is the leading cause of foodborne infections worldwide. Fresh fruits and vegetables are the vectors from which humans get infected from various pathogens. Now, for so prevention of emerging drug resistance in Salmonella, causing various diseases in humans was taken as the central theme of the present research work. The research work was conducted in the light of the following objectives. So in material method, you can see that there are three methods which are applied, that is sampling and characterization, isolation of Salmonella species, antimicrobial susceptible testings. So these methods I can elaborate one by one. Now, first is, Sampling and categorization. Salmonella species commonly found in water, canned food, spat food, juice, and clinical sample. Total 200 of salmonella isolate from different sources. Isolation and identification of salmonella was done by using membrane filter technique, enriched media, selective media, biochemical tests, and confirmed by standard identification method. In second method, the isolation of salmonella species. The selective enrichment culture is usually inoculated onto at least two selective argon media and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. The ISO method specifies the XLD argon and one optional selective media. A variety of alternatives are available in including bismuth sulfide agar, billion green agar, and hectron electron and enteric agar. A number of selective chromogenic argon media specifically designed for the differentiation of salmonella colonies are commercially available. Typical salmonella colonies or selective agar are subcultures or non-selective media to confirm testing. Now, the third is antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Antimicrobial susceptibility testing is also known as this diffusion susceptibility test. This method is performed and the method is known as the biobiotics method. This method is widely used and is recommended by the National Committee for Clinical Laboratory Standards and World Health Organization. Variation is controlled by standardized by technique. The method specifies the medium the, by muller hinton agar the inoculum adjusted by comparison with the barium sulfate, that is McFarlane standard. Inoculation method and a swab dipped into the microbial suspension and strict across the mediums and discontent. The size of the zone of inhibition is an indication of the susceptibility of the organism more resistance organisms give smaller zone of inhibition. The zone size compared with the standard chart and accordingly categorized as susceptible or resistance to a particular antibiotic 
Accordingly, this method is convenient, technically simple, and cheap, and correctly performed reasonably reliable. Next slide. Uh, next slide, after material method. Yes. So this is the antibiotics which I used in uh, in my research work. Ma'am, the previous slide was there, ma'am. Madam, this is a slide from materials and methods, and after yes. that, hmm, after antibiotic used for MIC determination. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, now, please change the slide after. So after performing multiple drug resistance, in short, we call it MDR. All the strains were tested by MIC concentration by PICOM MIC test and Mula hint and other. Plates, we get homogeneous growth in culture plate in which the inoculum was allowed to dry at least for five to 15 minutes after the PICOM MIC strip applied to the agar surface. By the scale of different concentration facing upward, plates were kept for incubation for 24 hours and 37 degrees Celsius, the zone of elevation was in the forms of ellipse. Now, after doing all the MIC tests, you observe that out of 302, 200 species of salmonella shows that according to MIC, the resistance strain was seen in this antibiotic that is CAS, CIP, CTS, NA, and E. And change the slide, man. So, in this uh, Blocks, you can see that in box, you can see that the CAS, SIP, NACTS have the percentage which have a high resistance of 88%, 84%, 87%, and 68%. But the summary was sensitive, shown in ampicillin. Ampicillin, they were shown in sensitivity result. I'm change the statement. So, in conclusion, I'm not described it, but I want to tell them what is the conclusion. So, the present investigation reflects that. Salmonella species are circulating all over India have not yet been acquired resistance against most of the antibiotics. This implies a need for precise laboratory investigation, especially antibiotic susceptibility testing without which serious ill patients are in danger. And secondary studies should suggest that ampicillin is a drug of choice for entering fever and also further other antibiotics are desired. So thank you so much for patients listening and I hope that I have not that much of slide, but I think that I give hundred percent of effort to present my work in front of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shashi ma'am. Now the last one is Dr. Milin Panchabai sir. Dr. Milin Panchabhai sir. Milin sir, are you there? Am I audible? Yes ma'am. You are yes, audible ma and sir is also there in the meeting. Then? Yes ma'am. <laughs> then I need to presentation. Just a minute. Let me check. Yes, he is there. Hello, doctor. Hello, uh, ha, sir. Uh, he is Hello, to connect, huh? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. हेलो मिलिन सर आवाज आ रही है आपको हेलो हां हेलो सर तो मैडम आवाज येतोय माझा हो 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 आता येतोय ओके जस्ट अ मिनिट जस्ट अ मिनिट मैम लॅपटॉप वरून काही होत नव्हतं म्हणून ठीक आहे ना सर मोबाईल ने जॉइन केलाय ना हां हां मोबाईल नेच केलाय मैडम ठीक आहे ना सर तुम्ही प्रेझेंट करा स्लाइड्स दिसतात आहे हां स्लाइड दिसते मैडम हां सर प्लीज स्टार्ट Hello, good afternoon ah. to all of you. 
myself dr milind das panchabhai assistant professor department of forensic biology government institute of forensic science nagpur today i am going to present a very simple topic that is identification of forensically important body fluids i will discuss the four body fluids here ma'am next slide please the first in very important body fluids that is blood so the when you want to detect the blood at a crime scene which and the detection is done at the on the side also or it is can be happen in the laboratory also the forensic laboratory fsl so once you talk about the blood uh, there is a liquid compartment that is called plasma and the other compartment is the cellular compartment and that in that among the cells the rbcs plays a very important role for the detection of blood madam next slide please here uh, there is a presumptive test and the confirmation test uh, primarily we will discuss here the presumptive test for the detection of blood the very important test is known as the kasselmeier test or phenolphthalein test in this particular test the hemoglobin molecule is detected but because this test utilizes the h2o2 solution and the hemoglobin behaves as a or like a peroxidase enzyme and it will liberate reactive oxygen that reactive oxygen will change the color of phenolphthalein and ultimately it will forms the pink color and the presence of pink color indicate the presence of blood the another very important test is a benzidin test which is commonly used in a laboratory to detect the occult blood that is the hidden blood which is not detected in a stool so that can, that particular test is also used and they have the same principle here here the benzidin molecule is reacted and it will release the oxygen and that re oxygen reactive oxygen will give, give the pink color next slide please ma'am so the another and a very important uh, important test that is the confirmative test this confirmative test is basically the crystal assay there are n number of confirmative tests but the test which is performed in a laboratory for the detection of blood i will discuss here this is there are two very major tests one is called as the tekman assay and other is called as the takayama test so the tekman assay and the takayama test both test almost having the 100 years until that it is used this is very simplest test in the tekman test we have the rhombo rhomboidal crystals if the oxy if the hemoglobin is present and in the takayama test the pink color needle shaped crystals is there and actually it's a pink color needle shaped crystal observed in the microscope if it is present then it is the blood is confirmed otherwise the presumptive test it is not the primary test huh? it's just a presumption the given sample may be blood or may not be blood but afterward the confirmation test you can easily says that the given sample is a blood or given stain is a blood next slide please the very important body fluids that is the saliva the presence of saliva can be detected with the help of various test uh, the very simplest test is the with the help of iodine reagent we can identify the saliva this is the composition among those in saliva amylase plays a very important role for the detection therefore i give the composition of the saliva next slide please ma'am uh, this is the salivary amylase activity as we know in saliva salivary amylase is there and the salivary amylase enzyme activity we know very well it will degrade the starch and ultimately it will release as the glucose but if the very simple test it is uh, if the saliva is not present then what happens the iodine when reacted with the starch it will give the blue color as the starch is degraded by the salivary amylase so the, it is not a starch then it will different compounds are there that is higher dextrin maltose glucose ultimately and that the change of blue color to brown color you can say up to brown color or otherwise a brown colorless that indicates the presence of saliva in a given stain and uh, i'm give i'm talking about the test but basically this test for example if you want to collect the saliva the saliva is collected from the cloth of of that particular person and that it is extracted from that and then you will perform and it will give the result so even though i show you the result in a very simplest manner and very observable manner but when you perform on the actual sample it's very difficult to identify the saliva sample also next slide please ma'am 
the very common test that is the FABA, FADA based test. This is the simplest test where the particular reagent is added to that particular uh, starch, and uh, along with that, that uh, simplest test which actually amylase activity but which is a higher version of the iodine test and same results will be seen here given that particular formation of the blue color if the blue color is not there then then there may be a chance of we have the sample here that is stain that is saliva stain is there next slide please the the another sample is the semen sample that is the in the sexual assault case we will identify this particular sample and here the acid phosphatase is the molecule which is identified for the detection of the semen sample and another molecule that is called the cells that is the sperms okay spermatozoa the presence of spermatozoa is also be identified why i am showing this composition of all these three molecules three samples because these are the molecule which can be used for the detection in the further research has been carried out for that also the next slide please ma'am Here, the presumptive test for the detection of the semen, uh, one test is called a light. As we know, the semen have the flavonoids, and that flavonoids are able to absorb the light and glitter it. The presence of that particular flavonoid gives the light test, and the other test that is called the sorry, that is called the formation of blue color with the help of acid phosphatase activity okay this particular formation of blue color is just because of the activity of the acid phosphatase that is simplest biochemistry test where the acid phosphatase acts and it will release the phenol molecule and ultimately it will give the color change next slide please uh, this is the light test where it will give glitter it okay that is uv light when you pass on that particular stain it will gives the color formation and that glittering of that particular thing is indicate that that particular sample is a semen and this is the one of the it is not a confirmatory test the confirmatory test is one of the tests that is with the help of microscopy you can confirm it and there are other tests also the next test is what that is a microscopy the simplest if you extract the sample and perform it as a simple microscopy you will observe the presence of spermatozoa. You know, single spermatozoa, presence of single spermatozoa can also confirm it. But the, all the confirmation is ultimately done for the individualization, that is the identification of the person. And that is done by the DNA isolation and the DNA fingerprinting. Next slide, please, ma'am. So this is the total the presentation from my side. And thank you for your special listening. I must thankful to the Preeti ma'am, Dongarwar sir, and the data sir giving me opportunity to present a few points regarding to forensic biology. It is not my PhD work and it is not my the personal work also. It's a just an informative type of talk, basically. Yes, sir. So thank you to all of you for very nice and in very simple questions. language you have explained. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, I have a question. Query rather. Yeah. Uh, how does this saliva sample help in crime detection? Saliva can be from any person. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, in uh, if you collect the saliva sample, first to identify the saliva sample, with that particular stain is a saliva. Uh, after that, uh, you can perform the blood grouping from the that particular saliva sample also. For blood grouping, and, we are, uh, uh, okay. blood if grouping we are can be also blood performed from the same saliva sample. Right. That is called the secretory status. Mm -hmm. One thing. And other thing is, if the cells are there, from that cell you can isolate the DNA and with the help of PCR you can multiply them. That is the multiple copy of the DNA you can create and from that you can perform the DNA fingerprinting for a personal identification. Means in saliva we have cells also. Yeah, yeah, definitely we have cells. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Any question other than that? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.
तो यहाँ पे अपने सारे सेमिनार आज खत्म होते हैं किसी को कुछ पूछना है और फिर आई विल प्रोसीड विद द इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर टुमारो एग्जाम ओके नो क्वेश्चन नो मैडम यू कैन प्रोसीड या कल का शेड्यूल पहले देख लीजिए सुबह अपना मॉर्निंग सेशन रहेगा योगा ऑन रेगुलर टाइम सेवन टू एट देन द नेक्स्ट सेशन रिलेटेड टू आईसीटी विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम नाइन थर्टी कल का जो सेशन है दो सेशन से आईसीटी से रिलेटेड जो आज थे जो पोस्टपोन हुए हैं कल के लिए उसका टाइमिंग है सुबह साढ़े नौ बजे से बारह बजे तक वो सेशंस रहेंगे दो फिर बारह बजे के बाद आप लोगों की ऑनलाइन एग्जाम रहेगी फाइनल एग्जाम जो मॉडल सॉफ्टवेयर पर ही रहेगी जो भी क्वेश्चंस रहेंगे या तो जो भी अब कंटेंट जो प्रिपेयर करना है जो भी सेशंस हुए हैं अपने अभी तक उन सेशंस के ऊपर बेस्ड दो दो तीन तीन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ईच टॉपिक आप लोगों को रह सकते हैं एंड इट इज़ इन ऑनलाइन मोड अगेन उसके बाद इफ देर इज एनी वेलिडिक्टी प्रोग्राम आई विल इन्फॉर्म अकॉर्डिंगली तो टाइमिंग आप लोगों को समझ में आए मॉर्निंग सेवन टू एट योगा सेशन देन नाइन थर्टी टू ट्वेल्व ओ क्लॉक विल बी अवर आई सी टी सेशन एंड फॉलोड बाई दैट यू विल बी हैविंग फाइनल एग्जाम ओके हाउ मच टाइम थर्टी थर्टी क्वेश्चन रहेंगे मैडम थर्टी मिनट्स की एग्जाम रहेगी हाफ एन ऑब्जेक्टिव पैटर्न येस ये ऑब्जेक्टिव four four objectives okay ma'am will there be questions based on tomorrow's ict session nahi 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 madam sab life science se related aur jo apna previous ict part ho chuka hai jo aap apna already jis pe quizzes diye hai usme se kuch do teen questions aa sakte hain thank you so much ma'am assignment bhi rahenge kal ki session mein nahi nahi madam kal koi bhi assignment wagaira nahi hai sirf aapki exam rahegi aur aapko ek feedback form diya jayega फीडबैक फॉर्म आपको भरना है प्लस पोस्टल एड्रेस के लिए एक फॉर्म दिया जाएगा उसमें आपको पोस्टल एड्रेस डालने हैं जो आउट स्टेशन पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं उन लोगों के लिए मैडम एग्जाम का टाइमिंग क्या रहेगा सेशन जैसे ही खत्म होता है उसके बाद यस यस बारह बजे नहीं सेशन खत्म होने के बाद आई विल ओपन द फाइनल एग्जाम और उसी वक्त आपको एग्जाम सॉल्व करके सबमिट करना है ये कब तक ओपन रहेंगे मैडम एग्जाम का बारह बजे से साढ़े बारह बजे तक अगर प्रॉब्लम रहा तो थोड़ा लेट चल सकता है क्या नहीं सर अपन लाइव मीटिंग में ही रहेंगे और साइमल्टेनियसली आप अपने डेस्क पे एग्जाम सॉल्व करेंगे जब तक सारे ग्रेड्स मेरे पास नहीं आते अपन मीटिंग को लीव नहीं करेंगे ठीक है तो मतलब वैलिडिटी के पहले आपके सबके एग्जाम हो जानी चाहिए मैम कल के सेशन पे रिकॉर्डिंग होगी कल के सेशन पे रिपोर्ट लिखनी होगी नहीं 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 कल कुछ भी टास्क नहीं है आपको कल का आखिरी दिन है तो सिर्फ आपकी एग्जाम फीडबैक फॉर्म आपको भरना है और पोस्टल एड्रेस का जो गूगल फॉर्म रहेगा वो सबमिट करना है एग्जाम टोटली आईसीटी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन रहेंगे मैडम नहीं लाइफ साइंस बेस्ड नॉट आईसीटी बेस्ड जो आपने लाइफ साइंस के सेशन हुए हैं वो उसके ऊपर एक दो क्वेश्चन रहे तो आई के रह सकते बट मेजोरिटी पार्ट आपका लाइफ साइंस के क्वेश्चन के ऊपर रहेगा गुगल फॉर्म वरती मैडम जस तुम्हें क्वीज सोल्व के अपने मुडल पैटर्न मध्य ठीक है मैम मी डे वन पास ओपन ज्यादिशन कर ओके ओपन के एक दोन सर क्वीज सबमिशन होते पेंडिंग तो प्लीज तुम्ही कंप्लीट करा ओके मैडम का तो अभी नहीं हो पाएगा क्योंकि वो डेट्स अभी वहां से चले गए होंगे तो ठीक है ना आई मार्क ओके मैम हाँ 
हेलो गुड आफ्टरनून मैम हाँ गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम एक रिक्वेस्ट होती मैं आईसीटी लगता जो सर्टिफिकेट है ना मैडम थोड़ा खूब चुरगड़ थोड़स हार्ड कॉपी मध्य जर पठ तो बर हो वनीला मैडम ओके जर बाहर कभी नागपुर इतना कलेक्ट करता आला दैट विल बी ओके क्योंकि प्रॉब्लम तो यूर्वी नहीं आला है कॉन्टेस्ट पार्टिसिपेंट सोब विल सी क्योंकि बाकी लोगों को भी अच्छे से सर्टिफिकेट्स मिल रहे हैं अभी हम दो तीन साल से जो भी चीजें कोरोना पेंडेमिक में जो भी हम लोग भेज रहे हैं तो ऐसा प्रॉब्लम तो कभी नहीं आया है इट मे बी प्रॉब्लम एट यूर एंड मतलब जहाँ पे भी वो आया होगा पोस्ट ऑफिस में तो जहाँ पे भी वहाँ पे कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है हम लोग कुछ रिस्पॉन्सिबल नहीं रह सकते ना सर पॉस्टल जर मिला ठीक है ना अभी कैसे जैसे भी रेनी सीजन है तो हम लोग प्रेफर करते हैं जो कोटेड वाले जो एनवेलप होते हैं उसमें भेजा जाता है अभी अभी के फेज में इसके पहले आई थिंक ब्राउन एनवेलप में आया होगा इनिशियली ठीक है मैडम एक क्वेरी थी मैं एक विचार जस दे लाइफ साइंसेस ब्रैकेट मध्य जस मई ब्रैकेट सब्जेक्ट ब्रैकेट मध्य हो हाँ हाँ प्लीज एक बायोकेमिस्ट्री है आपने जो सब्जेक्ट डाला होगा अपने रजिस्ट्रेशन के वक्त सर ने आपको एक लिस्ट भेजी थी करेक्शन के लिए अजय सर ने उसमें सब्जेक्ट बायोकेमिस्ट्री था ना कि फॉरेंसिक बायोलॉजी था एक बार पाउंड फॉरेंसिक बायोलॉजी आवडते बोलते हां मग तिथे तुम्हाला करेक्शन करावे लागेल सर नाही तर त्याप्रमाणे सर सर्टिफिकेट बनवतील सर मी सर तुमचं ते फॉरेंसिक बायोसायन्सेस लिहिलेलं आहे बरं का हां हां तेच फॉरेंसिक बायोलॉजीच लिहिलं आहे बायोकेमिस्ट्री करून टाका तिथे तुम्ही आपल्या आपल्या ग्रुप मध्ये टाकून द्या मेसेज की तिथे बायोकेमिस्ट्री करा ठीक है ठीक है मैडम एक बोलना था मुझे वो लास्ट टाइम एक मेरे ख्याल से मुझे याद नहीं आ रहा कोई एक पर्व था वेबिनार किया था उसका सर्टिफिकेट आने वाला था मैडम वेबिनार की डेट क्या थी सर ये अभी इतने में ही हुई थी अपनी जो अपना सेशन कोर्स के वक्त जब हुआ था यस कोर्स के वक्त दो वेबिनार हुए ठीक है ना मैं एक बार मैडम से पूछ लेती हूं क्या है मतलब अपडेट क्या है तो आई विल इन्फॉर्म यू टुमारो हाँ क्योंकि उसका आपने कहा था शायद सर्टिफिकेट मिलने वाला वो आया नहीं अभी तक मेल पर मेल चेक किया किया सर आपने? मेल चेक किया सर आज आया सर आज आया है मुझे आज आया क्या ओके फिर हो सकता है लीजिए एक बार अगर नहीं है तो फिर वैसे भी मैडम से पूछ के आपको बताती हूँ ओके मैम ठीक है थैंक यू हेलो राकेश सर हाँ हेलो राकेश सर हाँ बोलिए सर सुन रहे हो कल जो बात हुई थी थोड़ा सा करते क्या बात किस बारे में सर काय बोलायचं तुम्हाला कोणाला रेकॉर्डिंग बंद करू द्या पहिले यस मॅम यस मॅम प्लीज यस मॅम 